On October 20th, we'll have a new book, The Shadows of Reach, releasing for us, guys. This is the book that's supposed to set the stage for Halo Infinite. We recently got a cannon fodder interview with Jeff Easterling and the author, Troy Denning, about this book and what to expect for it and what kind of ties into Halo Infinite. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these news and informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button as it really helps out the YouTube algorithm so more people get a chance to see this video to stay in the know with everything going on with Halo. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo Infinite as we ramp up to the eventual release date, make sure you tap subscribe to the channel guys, so let's get right into the content here. So every once in a while, Jeff Easterling from 343 posts a cannon fodder on Halo Waypoint. Essentially, it's just a nice little look into some of the lore and storytelling when it comes to Halo. And oftentimes, these are just kind of fun little tidbits of information which are pretty cool to look into. But this one was certainly special and I think you guys definitely want to go in and read it if you want to. Link in the description down below. But I'm going to give you the nitty gritty of everything you need to know about this. He actually sits down with the author of Shadows of Reach, Troy Denning, who has written previous books on Halo, which have been reviewed and received very well, along with Halo franchise lead editor, Jeremy Hattenaud, if I pronounced that correctly, and to discuss what to expect for Shadows of Reach and what's the purpose of this book and how it kind of echoes one of the more famous books within the Halo franchise, Fall of Reach. So in a quick summary of what this book is supposed to do, Shadows of Reach is meant to be a Fall of Reach like story. Basically, it's meant to kind of set the table of what to expect going into Halo Infinite, kind of getting everyone up to date of what the game is going to provide. Now, this book is not necessary for you to read for you to actually enjoy what happens in Halo Infinite, much like how the Fall of Reach isn't necessary for you to read to enjoy Combat Evolved, but it definitely gives you a lot more backstory and a lot better understanding of the universe at the time of the game. After reading through this cannon fodder, they mentioned that multiple times of the Fall of Reach to the Shadows of Reach kind of comparison right there. Now, I'll be upfront with you guys, I'm not one who reads a lot of books or listens to a lot of audiobooks, but this might be something I want to jump in and give a good listen to because this book will help connect the gaps between what the events of Halo 5 and the beginning events of Halo Infinite. There are a lot of story arcs up in the air right now after the events of Halo 5 and a lot of characters ever go, okay, well, what's going to happen to all these new characters that are introduced in Halo 5? All these different story arcs brought up with the Reclaimer saga. How are they going to at least kind of like summarize or at least be kind of wrapped up when the time Halo Infinite releases because Infinite's supposed to be like a soft reboot of the franchise even though it still continues on the same story and so all the events of the previous games still matter and happened within universe but it's supposed to be much more of a spiritual reboot in the eyes of say like Combat Evolved is for the Halo franchise and taking a lot of inspiration from Combat Evolved in Halo Infinite so the Fall of Reach just like how Shadows of Reach is going to be for Infinite the Fall of Reach was a great way to kind of understand the universe and dig into it a little deeper. So what this story of the Shadows of Reach does, it says it sees Blue Team head back to their old stomping grounds to acquire assets she feels might just be a vital part to the solution to stopping certain digital dictators before they truly exert their will on the galaxy. Meaning I think we we'll might have a bit of a wrap up when it comes to possibly the Guardians and the whole uh, created versus you know humans kind of thing going on. At least some kind of progression within that story and continue on what happened in Halo 5 to kind of at least get that towards some kind of ending before the release of Halo Infinite. Now what that asset could be, there's a lot of speculation behind that. If it's Dr. Halsey necessarily pointing that out specifically and this is on reach, it makes me believe there has to be something involved with Cortana. As Cortana was created on Reach, I'm sure they're probably like clone brain samples under some kind of ashy you know, ruins in a building of Oni somewhere that they could probably go pick up and make a new Cortana model because we do know from the Discover Hope trailer that there is a new Cortana chip. But I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself and we'll go into that why a little bit later in this video. Interesting thing I wanted to bring up guys is since they were writing this story along with obviously Halo Infinite still being developed and worked on, that they mention how it is to write a story for a game that's in progress. I mean like, well, even though yes, these uh, these two different stories are self-containing in a way with the game of Halo Infinite and the story of Shadows of Reach, but they're still gonna have to, you know, make a book of Shadows of Reach to push the narrative forward to Halo Infinite and how 
various things within Halo Infinite, the gameplay wise might affect what happens with the storytelling of Shadows of Reach, much like saying like they break up the idea of equipment and how uh, different equipment can change or be thrown out or added into the game. And obviously utilizing equipment will probably be, be something that will happen in this story of Shadows of Reach and probably, you know, Master Chief using some very clever way to figure out how to use a bubble shield or some kind of grappling hook in some kind of way. And if that changes within the game, well, that kind of affects the storytelling within Shadows of Reach. So they mentioned how they were in very close communication with uh, Troy Denning and 343 to make sure they kind of get a nice cohesive story with Shadows of Reach, which I really appreciate that level of detail. Now a very interesting point Troy brings up in here saying 343 wanted Shadows to give a glimpse into certain plot points that also come to further fruition within Halo Infinite. And oftentimes this can mean that certain elements I'm writing in my manuscript are brought to life in parallel with ones being developed for Halo Infinite story and gameplay. So there's a lot of implications happening with Shadows of Reach. Like there's new plot points being brought up in here that might actually come within the game. And just kind of another reiterating kind of interesting point from Jeremy here saying, our main goal here was to create a kind of spiritual sequel of Halo Fall of Reach that sprung up on the heels of the dark and tragic events of Halo 5 Guardians. We wanted to capture a pivotal moment in time through the lens of Blue Team on the world in which they'd been forged and that's really the primary focus of the story. Now remember earlier when I said to make sure to not look too much into the story elements being brought up in Shadows of Reach? It's because they mentioned that directly in this post. Jeremy specifically mentions what I strongly caution fans to not read too far into anything in this novel or try to reverse engineer story points for the next game. We certainly worked hard for elements like the Chief, the Banished, and the general state of the universe to be entirely consistent, true, and in lockstep with everything done before and everything we're planning to do in the future. Which I think this is kind of the correct way to go about doing the storytelling within the books and also within the games. A big issue that ha happened with Halo 5, and a little bit with Halo 4, but mainly Halo 5, was the reliance on the extra source material to understand what's happening in Halo 5. Where did all these characters come from? If you never read any of the books, you would be like, okay, now Bucks are Spartan all of a sudden? Okay, I guess I'll have to roll with that. Who is Locke? Who is Team Osiris? Who is Jewel Madama? And well, how did, you know, palsy lose her arm and things like that, even though she lost in Spartan Ups, but that's a different story. So I'm glad to see that 343 is doing things or making these books you know, mean something within the greater story of Halo, but also not being so reliant on making sure that people know these books before jumping into the games. Jeff Easterling asked Troy and Jeremy about who are their favorite characters in this story. Troy Denning, the author, replies back, Master Chief, and also Caster. If you guys don't know who Caster is, he's been kind of a main player of the brutes within the external lore of Halo within some of the books. Uh, you'd find appearances from him in Halo Last Light, Halo Retribution, Halo Silent Storm, and now Shadows of Reach. If you don't know who Caster is, he's a Gerald Hane chieftain from the former Covenant military as an army commander from there. After the Human Covenant War, he became what was known as a Dokab, which is kind of like a religious leader within the brutes. They mentioned how Caster is kind of a guy who still holds a strong belief in the religious thoughts of the Covenant, but then also seeing those uh, beliefs kind of get eroded while being part of the Banished. And so he's a bit of a conflicted character. Really interesting things to hear when it comes to a character's development. I would really like to see what happens within the book. If you want to read more about Caster, I'll leave a link to the Halopedia in the description down below, guys. Definitely check out Halopedia if you want some kind of more in-depth lore information. Definitely worth reading into. Jeremy replies back with that same question with Islan Gadode? Gay? Yeah, something like that? It's a weird Sahili name, okay? Sue me if I can't pronounce every Sahili name correctly. Saying that he's a very mysterious banished Sahili. He says that Troy Denning, the author, nailed completely. Could this be someone that we might see in those possible high value target missions that we might have within the campaign of Halo Infinite? I mean, again, that's some uh, reverse engineering little bit of uh, speculation right there, but I think it's something cool to look into. And while we're on the topic of Halo Infinite and books, it recently just came out with some interesting information about the art of Halo Infinite book has had a its date changed. Previously, it had a placeholder date of December 31st, 2020. 
Obviously, we know that's going to be coming out later to coincide with the game's release. Though, uh, in this recent Amazon update, they updated the date to being June 29th, 2021, which does fall on a Tuesday, which game releases do typically happen on Tuesdays. Now, this doesn't mean Halo Infinite's release date has been revealed. Uh, it doesn't even mean that this book will release on the same day of Halo Infinite. But it also could give you a bit of an insight maybe a month later, maybe a month before or something like that. But I do feel it's very important to point out that Halo 5's art book did release on the same day as Halo 5. Obviously the development of Halo 5 was a much different experience than it is right now for Halo Infinite. And with the pandemic still going on, everyone's still working from home. A lot of things are still quite up in question and up in the air what can actually be done. I've seen some websites out there saying, has Halo Infinite's release date been leaked? Well, I wouldn't say necessarily, as Halo Infinite is looking to be a major game for Xbox. Generally, these major titles release in either the early half of the year, either March or early April, or then we do have sometimes the games will just end up releasing in the fall of October and uh, November as well. Obviously, we had games like The Last of Us released during the summer, late spring months, but that's because COVID just hit right there. They were trying to make a spring release and just couldn't quite hit it. So is June 29th the release date for Halo Infinite? Maybe. I mean, uh, even in this post too, when it comes to the uh, Amazon posting, it doesn't even say the actual date when it comes to the date within the description. It even says release date subject to change, cover not final. This date also does kind of coincide along with a quarter end kind of thing because generally a fiscal quarter would start on July and end on June. So maybe it's just kind of like a quarter end kind of placeholder date kind of thing. But it's interesting how it recently changed from December 31st, 2020 to now June 29th, 2021. Could Halo Infinite be looking for a spring release? I don't know, maybe. Again, this is all subject to change. Wait till you see Halo officially announce the release date. And once they do, I guarantee I'll make a video on it for you guys. So make sure you keep in the know with everything going on with Halo. Overall guys, I am very excited about the Shadows of Reach. Definitely looking forward to it. Seeing how it's gonna connect the story between Halo 5 and the Halo Infinite. There's a lot of work to be done there and it'd be interesting to see how they go about doing it. So I definitely will be listening in or reading that book whenever that comes out, give you a solid review and kind of give you an overview of kind of what the expectations are with the book. Probably do like a spoiler review thrown on there as well. So if you guys like these kind of videos, please make sure to tap that like button, leave a comment down below what your thoughts on the Shadows of Reach. Are you excited for this? Get you excited for it? It certainly does for me. If you missed any videos from me, check out the videos on the screen right now. I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.